All right, friends and neighbors, good morning. Uh, we're here in the kitchen, and um, I'm gonna be showing you today for our first video how to make uh, egg and green banana soup. So just to show you where I'm getting this recipe from, it's from a book called Puerto Rican Cookery. And uh, I cooked a few things out of here, and I thought we'd start with something interesting and different. Um, none of my friends have ever had egg and green banana soup, and I made it once, and it was surprisingly delightful. So that's what we're gonna go for. So first, you need eight green bananas. Uh, some of these are a little yellowed. Uh, this one is probably the most green one we have, and I already have some that are chopped up, but I'll show you what we're gonna do with them. So you peel them, it's very simple. Take them out, and then you're gonna cut each one of them in half. And then you'll have a container with about four cups of water and two tablespoons of salt. And then you're gonna let them soak in there for about 15 minutes, okay? So you're gonna do that with all eight bananas. Oh, I wanna make sure to get all of the banana out of the peel. Then like I said, we'll just let these soak for 15 minutes. It's four cups of water, two tablespoons of salt. So this is where we're gonna have them. Now, we have some that were pre-soaked, so those will actually be extra for the recipe. Now what you're going to need all together for this is eight green bananas, eight eggs, uh, seven and a half cups of chicken stock, and really that's it, and then salt. So for chicken stock, there is a certain way that you can make stock with bones and everything, but we don't have time for that, so we're just using um, chicken uh, bouillon cubes to make broth. So we already have that over on the stove, seven and a half cups with seven and a half cubes, because it's usually one cube per cup of water. So what we're going to do is after you've had, these are the bananas we've already had soaking. So you're going to take these and in vegetable oil or canola oil. Now these vegetable oil and canola oil are actually interchangeable. The only real difference is that canola oil has 1% um, saturated fat, whereas vegetable oil has about two, so it's a little healthier. But you use canola or vegetable oil because unlike olive oil, uh, these have a high smoking temperature, so they, it takes a bigger heat to burn them, which means they're able to be used for frying, and they also don't have a, um, a distinct strong flavor like olive oil does either. So you can use them to fry just about anything and retain the initial flavor. So you want canola oil at least enough to fill up about halfway to the height of the, um, the bananas when you put them in. It should be at about 350 degrees. Uh, this might be a little cool, but that's okay because it's best to cook them a little longer to get them where you need them than to have them burn at too high of a temperature. So we're getting close to there. Now they should need to cook for about 10 minutes each. So we're just gonna begin laying these in. And it actually probably would be smarter to use a tongs, but it's not hot enough yet to really um, squirt up at me. So we'll just lay these in. Yeah, listen to that. So again, this is eight whole bananas cut in half, soaked in water and salt for 15 minutes. And they should have to cook for about 10 minutes altogether. Um, okay. So while those are getting ready, uh, there's really nothing else to do now except for wash them because we have the chicken stock prepared over here and I'm just keeping that on a warm temperature. So what we're going to do next is when these are done being fried, I'm gonna put them into a bigger bowl and I'm going to mash them. Now if you have a mortar and pestle, that works best, but we don't. So really, as long as your hands are clean, that's just fine. We're gonna mash them up and then form them into little balls. Then we're gonna drop them into the chicken stock after we reheat it to a high temperature. And once those are in, we'll crack eight eggs into that chicken stock as well. Now you wanna be careful not to crack the yolk or to break the yolk, 
when you do that because when they cook in the soup, you're actually going to get a fully cooked yolk with egg white around it. Not like a hard boiled egg, it'll sort of look like a dippy egg. But uh, we'll get there in a, in a few minutes. So these are cooking, which is nice. They're cooking slow. I said about 10 minutes. Now they, they would have reduced the temperature once I dropped them in, so I'll turn that up a little bit. You just want to be careful to monitor the temperature of the oil because the first time I ever did this, the flavor was still, well, exquisite. The banana flavor really leached into that chicken broth um, well, but we actually burnt a lot of the bananas because the temperature was way too high. So we had much less uh, banana volume and a lot more black charred, well, essentially charcoal. Okay. They're going slow. Turn that up a little more. Let that seep in, okay. So they're still going, and they're not gonna be done yet, but if you come in close here, you can see a little bit of color change on the top of that banana that I turned over. That's what they should all just about look like all around when they're done. But the temperature still isn't quite at 350, so they're gonna take a little longer but again, that's fine. They will cook, and what matters is that they're not overdone. Oh, fried bananas smell delicious. We need to create a, a smell of vision. Smell of vision? Yeah, so instead of just like television where you watch what's happening, you can actually smell it too. Like a mailed subscription box. Pretty much. When I was a kid, I was watching Food Network once with my grandmother. Like the only time I ever watched Food Network. And I remember she said that to me. I was like, Bran Brandon, they should have smell vision so we could smell what they're cooking. Stick some paper inside. <laughs> Get that taste all up on it. Exactly. Get one of those scratch and sniffs? Yeah, scratch. Get it in the mail? Yeah. All right, so some of these are starting to get more cooked, but it's mostly only on one little side. Make sure this is about as evenly on here as possible. <clears throat> but always balance though. Okay, so they're going. That's good news. Um, so since this will be ready soon enough, I'm going to uh, uh, begin <clears throat> heating up that stock more. Misha, Misha, come here. Want to be on camera? Want to be on camera? Can you come here? Can you sit? Can you sit down? Good girl. You should a good baby. This is our handy helper, Mish. She's our moral support. She doesn't do a lot of cooking. She does occasionally come with us when we go to the store to buy the ingredients. She loves car rides. Don't you, Mish? Don't you, Mish? Yes, you do. You're a good girl. <laughs> I love pulling her ears back. You're so cute, Mish. Turns back down again. They're heating up more. I'm gonna. You want to turn them so that if they do cook, one side doesn't get too overcooked while the other side is nice and well done. Because like here's a banana that you can see a part of it was getting very well cooked, but I want to make sure that we don't get one side that begins to get too cooked. Okay, so we're still good actually. That's good news. So the bananas are beginning to cook, and if you come in you can see that they're becoming a darker yellow. They're getting a nice tint to them. Some are getting a golden brown. So they're getting close to where I want them, but they're not quite there yet. I'm just a little nervous about the dark spots because I don't want them to become burnt. But they should be done in just a few minutes. But I want to make sure that they're nice and properly cooked so we can get all that sweetness out of them. Because you use green bananas because if they're yellow and they're too ripe, they're already too mushy. They're not good for frying. But as you fry the green bananas, although they're less ripe, they become more sweet as you fry them. You bring out like more of those sugars, you break down some of the chemicals inside the bananas. So, all right, I'm gonna turn that down. I'm just gonna move that off for a moment because I don't want it to be quite boiling until these are ready to be added in, which will be just a minute. You know President Herbert Hoover actually had an irrational fear of bananas? There was one time in the White House he had um, a mental breakdown because there were bananas in the kitchen. Oh, yeah? Well, you're picturing it and we're talking about it. Is he, fear, is he terrified <laughs> of the, what are they called, 
Hoover Towns. What the f*** is a Hoover Town? Isn't it Hoover Towns? Am I just completely botching I'm, I mean, I just don't know. Uh, for, oh, for the viewers who haven't seen Big Mouth, I just made all that up. Um, you might, you might want to bring this in here really quick, though. So these are really getting a lot of color to them. I don't want these to burn. Some of the outside aren't quite as cooked, but that's okay. They're not visually as cooked, but they're doing very well. So I'm going to begin taking out some of these nice golden brown ones. I'm just going to try to get, shake off some of that oil. Shake it off, shake it off. Shake it off, shake it off. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Hey, hey, hey. How many things we can get? Song references? We should just like have like a different theme for each video, just some stupid way to annoy our viewers. Song references one day, TV show references. One day we'll have all John Mulaney references. I mean, I think the viewers at home would like some John Mulaney references. If, yeah, I'd, I would, if you don't like John Mulaney, I don't want you watching my videos anyway, so. And if you haven't seen John Mulaney. <laughs> just go watch him. I'll forgive that, I'll forgive Stop that. Stop watching this video currently. You can come back and resume it. <laughs> You have to go watch John Mulaney. <laughs> <laughs> Can you add the bleeping noise oh, to I these videos? I'm gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> I might just do it on random words. You'll just be in the middle of a sentence saying the word they. Misha, you um, cute little. <laughs> people think I'm abusing my dog. It's like, no, I just said dog afterwards. My producer's a. <laughs> you cute little pooper. My producer is. A Mm, that felt good. Ooh, a little bit of that oil burn. Yeah, that was nice. That's hot. Literally and figuratively. What? That felt really nice. Uh, 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 sorry. This one here is definitely good. Just want to get more of that oil out there. Shit. Well, they're going, to get, they're going to get quite mushy as you cook them. Keep that in mind, which is necessary because we're going to mush these up into balls. Um, first, more of into a paste. Then we're going to form them into balls as if you're making meatballs. Uh, same general idea, but different texture, different, well, one's meat, one's a fruit. Is that right? I, I can let you cook them if you have a better way of doing it. No? Okay. So I'm just going to add these other bananas in here while we still have the oil nice and hot. Okay? Don't do that. Make sure that if you're going to put them in, you don't accidentally drop them in. Misha, that's hot canola oil. Please. Yeet out of here. Misha. Should also turn that down. Okay. So when those are done, then we can just add um, cinnamon sugar or honey to those just to um, make like a separate little snack. <clears throat> so friends and neighbors, the other reason to watch out for how cooked they are is because if the outside gets too cooked and it's crunchy, when you're mashing them up, it's gonna be harder to form um, these into to, to nice compact balls. So some of these, the darker ones might actually be a little more cooked than they should be for the sake of putting them into, um, to mash them up and forming them into banana balls, but that's all right. They're still hot, so I'm not gonna do this quite by hand yet. I'm just gonna sort of chop them with this little ladle and then begin mushing them together. So, if only you guys could smell this. The smell of these bananas is just, it's extremely sweet. Viewers, I'm with you. I can't smell anything currently. My smell of this shit is off. Alright. This would be much easier by hand, but you can see the steam coming off of these, I'm sure. I'm just releasing all of this heat. Yeah, 
some of those were a little more cooked than we wanted, but thankfully it's not the majority, so this will all still mix very well together. Just need to keep mashing it. So you can see that lighter color is kind of a, how it all should look, but, or most of it. There should be less uh, dark brown in there than there is, but again, it's actually quite fine. fine. And once this cools down enough, I'll be able to start forming nice banana balls out of it to drop into the soup. All right, let me just, uh, while this still dissipates its heat. I'm gonna make sure these don't burn because this oil is nice and warm. Yeah, okay. So what we're doing now is we're taking the mashed bananas now that they're, they're still warm, they're still quite warm, but they're cooled down enough to touch and we're just making, well, little balls out of them. And once I get all this done, we're going to drop them one by one into the uh, simmering chicken broth. We're going to add one and a half teaspoons of salt to that and then we're going to crack eight eggs into that soup. Whole, you don't want to break the yolk. You're just going to crack them directly into the soup. Yeah, just so everyone knows, my journey to learning how to cook has been all over the place. Um, I learned how to cook chicken biryani before I learned how to make mashed potatoes. Um, I learned how to make French macarons before I ever boiled pasta on my own. So, you're kind of learning along with me. So this will be a fun journey to whoever decides to watch these videos. Okay, this is very oily, sugary. Imagine that after being fried in oil. All right, we're getting there. They sound moist. Oh, they're moist. Super moist. They're moist. Oh boy. Oh, they're so they're so moist. Sound off in the comments if you sound can off. Can you can you hear them? Moist. Can you hear them? Yeah. I hope the microphone picks that up. God, it's like ASMR for people who <laughs> I don't know. Who like who like moistness. Oh. Moist ASMR is tight. So we, so the me and me and Schmitty here, uh, we're having a conversation with um, uh, a local caterer that we work with, or for rather, and with. And uh, we were talking about the word moist and how it's one of those words that has a lot of controversy around it, that a lot of people seem to hate and really be bothered by. But it's also one of those words that has never bothered any of us, um, us three. Um, and also, chalk screeching on a chalkboard hasn't bothered me. People rubbing plastic or paper plates together doesn't bother me. Um, I mean, I'm glad about it. So we have these all rolled into balls. Now what we're going to do is, one by one, we're just going to drop them into the soup. And then, after this, we want to do it somewhat quickly, because we need to crack in the eggs, too, put in the salt, and then, as it's boiling, make sure it's high enough heat, because we want it to cook vigorously for about three minutes. And that's it. So it's gonna be not a thick soup, but a very full soup. Um, you could, I might mess with it the next time I make it, add a little more stock, um, broth, so that way there's more, you know, broth to, uh, well, physical content ratio. So now we're gonna take these eggs here, which were laid by the chickens that we own. They are out back by our shed. Beautiful convenience of living in a somewhat rural area and being able to have your own chickens. And then just right into there. I don't think any of that shell broke. I hope not. Not then, just gotta be careful when you're putting it right into there not to break any shell. There's two. Move this over here. Go. So 
remember you need eight eggs. An egg for each whole banana. And do be careful not to break the yolk. These will add a little bit of thickness from the uh, the egg whites too. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. And this should be our last one. One we're going to add number eight. Okay. No, that's boiling, so we're gonna let it cook for about three whole minutes. Then we're gonna turn off the heat, take it off, let it slowly cool to a temperature we can eat it at, and then we will enjoy it. We'll pour out a bowl so you can all see the final product, and we will taste test. So the soup is done, and it's not quite, I don't know if it's cool enough yet, the taste is still steaming, but we're going to begin pouring. Now you'll notice, as I pour this out, that it is not the most aesthetically pleasing soup. Um, I don't personally think that's an issue. Uh, some people might get too caught up on image, but the flavor, if it's as good, it's probably better than last time because we didn't burn it, should be, um, well, quite incredible. Now, how, like, how long did you let it sit before you poured it out? Uh, it's only been sitting for probably, what, five, seven minutes, which that's not vital to the recipe. It's just letting it sit long enough so that it cools down to the point of being able to eat it. So that's really about it. But I just wanted to make sure that we can actually try it without burning ourselves. So, okay. There we go. That'll be for us. And then... Remember, children, do not judge a book by its cover. Although when it comes to real books, I often do. <laughs> Love it. All right. Looking like a bum in this one. That's all right, all right. So that's your bowl here. All right. Should be more than cool enough now. We're gonna taste test. Honest opinions only. I cheated, I had a few spoonfuls already. You cheater. What do you think? The sweetness from the banana really gets into that broth. It's in there, it's not in as strong as I remember from last time, but I think that's because the last time, there was kind of a give and take where the bananas were way overcooked, so getting them into a ball was nearly impossible because the outsides were totally black burnt. Mm -hmm. But that meant the flavor was a lot stronger. Yeah. So. But what I'm what I going to do it again, because it kind of worked, because they could use a little more sweetness, I think. I actually drizzled a little bit of honey into the top of my bowl, and I'm going to put a little more in there. If you want to try the same, oh, yeah. I thought it worked well. Uh, it could definitely use a little more sweetness here. Those bananas we had on the side, we ate those while we were cooking. We just fried bananas, drizzled honey on them, and with the honey, we also squeezed a lemon on them, because the lemon, that sourness, really offsets the sweetness very well. And lemon and banana uh, pairs up very good. They, well, they just combine well because they're such opposite sides of the spectrum. And it was my first time trying that combination. And well, I was impressed. I mean, you liked it too, you said. Oh yeah, that would be the perfect like snack yes, for just a quick. Yeah, I mean, it's sugary, but it's fairly healthy other yeah. than being fried, but like it's banana. If you're working out regularly. <laughs> yeah, or even like a breakfast thing before you go to work or something like that. <laughs> yeah. So I have a banana ball and part of the egg on this one. Ooh, fancy. Mm-hmm. I'm into that. I'm into it. I'm not sure what, I feel like it could use something else. I'm not sure what. I think maybe the flavor could just be a little stronger. Because that banana really did seep in well, but I think it could seep in stronger, more intensely. But that's the recipe for this. It came out very well. I'm not sure exactly what could be changed. It's, it's very good. 
But uh, of course, we all strive for perfection, despite it being unattainable. So just another reminder, so everybody knows that recipe was from Puerto Rican Cookery by Carmen Vadahuli. And we're going to actually have the recipe written out in the description for the video down below. So if anyone wants to try to recreate this, um, maybe if you want to add any of your own twist to it, we're up for other suggestions too. The honey was just an add-on that we did and I thought it worked pretty well. So yeah, if you want to recreate it, we'll um, in the descriptions have the full recipe with all the instructions written out. It's, it's really quite simple, so. And also if you give something else a try and you like it, please comment below the, what tweaks you made so that we can all try it. Yeah, and if, and if it works out well enough, maybe we'll make another video and uh, well, add in the twist if it's a distinct enough difference. All right, so thanks for watching.